This podcast was produced by Sean Weston Media. Would you like to do the dimly lit intro this week? I think you just do it really nicely. I wouldn't want to mess it up. All right, give me give me a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. From a dimly lit cupboard somewhere in England, two people chat about communications. Sometimes they chat about other things. Welcome to From the Commons Cupboard. Uh, so, I'd like to talk about something today. That's that, why we're here. Yeah, that's why we're here. <laughs> why else be sat in a very small hot cupboard during a heat wave? It is quite warm. It is quite warm in here. Uh, but cosy. And we can't hear the neighbours. We'll call them neighbours. Yeah, We've well, called them other things. And the barbecues. <laughs> barbecues. I quite like the smell of a barbecue. Actually. I do. I don't know what I like. Though. Is it the is it the smokiness or is it the meat? Because I'm not, you know, I'm not a big meat eater, but I like the smell of it. I think it's the two together. It's the meat on on the barbecue, the smoky, seared smell. Seared, seared. The smell of seared meats <laughs> dripping onto hot coals. coals. Yeah, that's why people love it. They don't mind that it's raw in the middle. No, no, definitely not. Of course, different cultures like different things. They do. <laughs> did, did you like that segue? I did. Because what I'd like to talk about is communicating with faraway offices. So when you when you have your business and your headquarters are in sunny Congleton, for instance, it's just something a place that came to mind. And yet you have a satellite office in Dubai. Because I imagine someone in Congleton may have a satellite office in Dubai. How do you effectively communicate with people in different time zones, different languages, different cultures, uh, smaller teams, bigger teams? How do you do that? I guess we're all trying to work that one out. I think I've said it before. <laughs> Let's probably say it again. It comes down to planning, doesn't it? Yeah. Time zones are tricky things. Um, and people... Throughout the world, they're probably working very unusual hours. If your headquarters was in rural Cheshire, people around the world might be working to your time zone. But I think the big thing about it is you still need to make it personal and you still need to make it relevant to people where they are. I think the thing we always hear is things are very centre-based. You know, it's always coming from the perspective of the UK or from the centre of wherever the organisation is. wherever the headquarters Wherever are. the headquarters is. Um so that might not be relevant to those people. So if you've got someone in India or someone in China, I don't really mind that it's super hot weather in the UK that week or that it's charity day or whatever it is in that country. So you need to make sure that there's a certain flexibility to how you communicate with them. Do you think the people in, in the other faraway offices mm. um, know or have an appreciation of how the business works so say it's a British business mm. and there's a certain way of being British. Mm. Um, now, you have a satellite office in Dubai. Do they need to understand the way it works or can they adapt it? Is that the whole idea that they can adapt the working style of the British company to how it would most effectively work in Dubai? It's a mixture, isn't it? Because you have your values and your vision and the way you work as that British company but that needs to be relevant to people locally there so I think that's a real skill of local leadership and people who communicate in making things relevant for the people there but still having that feeling that you work for one one organisation. How does the comms team best do that do you think? Is it, is it just uh, frequent um, contact or is it something different? I think it's taking a central message and then being quite flexible with it so making sure the key things come across, and that's that's the skill of the communicator, I guess, to pull together those really important parts, but then put their local slant on it. So mm. why is that relevant for us? This is what we do. How do how do we contribute to that? So it's not all just we are, we need to make X this X million this year to survive. What's next? Actually, what do we do to contribute to that and make it real for them? Mm. I I think also the centralizing of content is important so that the faraway offices and, and i've simplistically 
said somewhere in Dubai, but you could actually also have the reverse time zone. Someone in America, someone, someone in Scotland even, you know, it's in your mm. time zone, but they're far away. Um, I think the centralization of content is really important so that even if you're not up at the same time, you can still get to that piece of information that you need, that image, that lo business logo, that, that memo, without having to find the person who made it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I also, and we've talked about this before, but having a lot of the tools that we have available to us now mean we can um, program when messages go out. So it's not. I don't think it's particularly nice for somebody to always get communications from a, a corporate function in the middle of the night or when they're not working. It's much nicer to receive that in your work day. So being able to program in those communications and make them personal for the where they're going out we can do that now very easily can't we you see now and again i like to think of myself as a writer and i wrote a blog about this very thing collaboration mm -hmm. and that's called asynchronous collaboration okay it's when uh you're collaborating with someone without actually doing it there and then and mm. I actually believe in all of that. I believe in a, a team can be very, very efficient, whether wherever you are in the world. Mm. Did you know WordPress, you know, WordPress, the CMS, mm. their whole company has always been distributed. They've never had an office. I, you know, I tell a lie. I think they did have an office years and years ago when they first started, but they rented it out to somebody and they all, they, they all work remotely. I, f I think it's marvellous. It's a nice way to pass on projects throughout the day and keep things moving. So if you've got teams around the world, yeah, that's a super way to make things continuously roll, but you do as much as you can, you then hand it over to the next team who do that as much as they can. Yes. And you can keep projects or anything just constantly moving, opposed to, you know, nine to five in Europe and then it shuts again for another 12 hours, opens up again, you know. You can get two days worth of work. Well, there's a transparency about your your work then as well, isn't there? Mm. About handing it off and seeing what someone else has done. Here's my bit. Now I know where it goes next in yeah. the chain. It's, there's a real transparency to, to the project. True collaboration as well. Isn't true it? collaboration. Actually yeah. working on something, not just talking with somebody. Yeah. But I also think we need to know about those people in faraway offices. We do. Yeah. And and that's such an important role for comms team. I think is is. You know, if you've got an intranet, if you've got a podcast, if you've got a newsletter, include those people mm. and their successes and what they're doing. Yeah, and if you're working in hundreds of countries, you know, 100 countries, say, and the good news stories always just come from the same places. I think the ones that aren't shy. Yeah. <laughs> the ones that want to... The gobby ones. The gobby ones. <laughs> Very good northern <laughs> saying there. The gobby ones. So, yeah, you got to kind of search that out as well isn't it's a good good role of a communicator to find those stories find not the just, shy ones yeah and make sure that they're being acknowledged and you know they're contributing as well so that they feel feel part of that team because otherwise it just all sounds the same it all comes from the same people and then they others stop reading they stop they turn off they delete your podcast which people should never do how dare they <laughs> never delete the podcast <laughs> 